It's a fairly simple question. Landfill gives it to us straight. I think the tricky part here is what are expectations, but the question is what will it take for the commanders to exceed expectations this fall? It's going to take Jaden being everything we think he is with an offensive line playing far better than they showed us last year and a defense that's going to be remarkably better because we put all the pressure on the quarterback position. But as a former player, I understand that everything helps. Everything around that quarterback makes his job easier, which in turn makes him be able to be who he is. If your defense gives up 25, 30 points a game, your quarterback is pressing. If your quarterback's pressing and the offensive line isn't great, quarterback's going to get his ass kicked, point blank. You're not going to use your running backs effectively. So I, for me, I think everybody that was brought in, those pieces have to be as close to perfect to allow everything else to grow properly. Kind of get cohesive. It's like you take a plant and you just go plant it over here in this rough, rough dirt with no water. You take another one and you take the potting soil and put it in there. You water it, you put some food. That plant grows. But why does it grow? Everything around it is is right. Over here, everything isn't. So more than just Jaden having to be the guy, the guys around Jaden going to have to be who they are or who they can be to allow him to be able to go out there and be that icing on the cake. Yeah, for me with expectations, the person I have the most belief in is Peters to build this the right way, right? And so for me to deliver upon expectations isn't about a record or playoffs or what, but it's for players i i'd say draft picks but especially the the free agents that got multi-year deals luvu and armstrong Mm -hmm. that's that's who i'd be looking at there to show that they are cornerstones for a longer term goal because the goal to me isn't this year it is three years from now being a real contending team Mm -hmm. and i think if if Sam or still balls out and you're like, okay, they've got a piece there or the young linebacker, they drafted from temple. Like mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be like, yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Everything will the the tide will rise and fall with Jaden Daniels. I get that, but it's also about putting together enough pieces for the long term that you build an organization that can sustain but, injuries and losses. But and that's, that's just, what I want to see. But see, that's just it. Like, this is the thing. I know exactly how this game is going to play out. Every play, series, game, fans are going to be swayed on that. You and I both understand that this thing is a, a plan for two, two to three years down the road. Now, if they happen to get that quicker, cool. Sure. But the expectation, if it's two to three years down the road, you have to be, you got to live according to that. Not according to if they go get blown out in one game or they blow somebody else out. As much as we sit here, we fall into what the fans do. And I think the coaching and the players will let you know where they're going and how they're thinking. We can't go up and down with with, with how a, a fan is, you know, that, they're just fan is so often fanatical. We can't let every Daniels throw be an indictment or a celebration. Yeah, and a rookie I, I quarterback. Think, I think that's be- the ultimate thing because if he is two, three steps better than he was in the beginning of the season, at the end of the season, all that damn matters. Well, and I, and I think it's about finding pieces for the long haul while winning games, like, hey, dude. Because we could talk about Adam Peters and his vision is the long-term vision. Cliff Kingsbury's vision ain't long-term. Dan Quinn's vision ain't long-term. They got to win. And they probably get a two-year grace period. But if the offense stinks at the end of year two, hey, we need somebody else to work with Jaden. 
Like, like the coaching staff, the veteran players that are on one-year deals, they're not thinking long-term. They're thinking about beating the Bucks week one, and that yeah. should be that vision. But see, but that's but that's, you want. I'm just happy that ideally you have these parallel paths rather than what has just been herky jerky, no path at all. But the mindset of the players should always be: Look, I'm trying to be the best I can ever Hell absolutely yeah. be. I was listening to was Aja Wilson. Uh, she said the problem is that everybody is good. How many people are willing to put in the work so they can try to be great every play? You know, when you hear people talk, they talk about trying to reach, do something well this week or next week. If your focus is more like Kobe would discuss, trying to do something better every time you go out there to exceed what you did previously, it makes you get into a zone where you don't sit around and, and miss a lot of opportunities. That's what the players have to think. But I think also us in the media, we have to understand when you get it, we know wins count. But you also know when they don't have enough talent on their team to compete with the better team. Right. I, I, and I was talking to some folks about this last night. I, they've done a really good job of getting this team ready to play this year with a whole bunch of Band-Aids. They got a whole bunch of veteran free agents that are going to fill some spots. They got no depth. Injuries happen. Like it, it, We'll see how this unfolds. But I think expectations have to be realistic for them to exceed those expectations. If your expectations are Jaden Daniels and CJ Stroud and they're getting the divisional round of the playoffs, I think that's over the top. Mm -hmm. Now, folks are calling in. I want to hear from the boys in the aquarium on the conversation. What do they need to do to exceed expectations? You know, one of the things I thought last year that was kind of the biggest problems um, was how frequently they threw the ball. And part of the reason they did that was because they were losing all the time. Like they were constantly behind in the games because the defense sucked and couldn't stop anybody. And specifically the secondary was terrible. So to me, what it's going to take for them to exceed expectations is the secondary uh, getting its act together. Then I'm not saying they have to be good. They just can't be, they can't be awful like they were last year. Then if that happens, uh, the score will be a little bit closer and you won't be putting so much pressure on a young quarterback to go out there and and constantly throw the ball so you can uh, stay in the games a little bit longer. And I think that's just ultimately going to lead to more success. There you go. Landfill, you're smart, man. All Thank right. you, B. So Landfill thinks the secondary is better. The defense will suck less, which is a fair. <laughs> Jeffrey, what say you, buddy? Uh, for the offensive side, I would need more creative play calling. Um, we didn't see last year our offense get too creative. Um, I would like to see that. Um, that will cause them to exceed expectations. And we got to get we got to get off the field defensively. Uh, as Landfield said, we need to also generate more pressure on as a defense all around. And I mean, from the D line to the linebackers to the cornerbacks, we need to. In order for us to exceed, we need to be more aggressive as an entire team, whether it's offensively or defensively. They ranked 28th in the NFL and getting off the field on third down. Um, 29th in the NFL and getting off the field on fourth down. Um, 21st in the NFL in giving up touchdowns in the red zone. Um, there's there's nothing that doesn't need improvement. Um, I think like one of the most fascinating kind of subplots in this. And I, most people probably just want to call in and say Jaden Daniels, right? Like I get that. that. That's how they exceed expectations. If he comes in and balls out and that's not incorrect. Um, I am fascinated to see what this staff can do with Emmanuel Forbes. And Forbes said he, you know, he met with them before the combine. It's easy. And it's become this like punchline about how skinny he is, how small he is. This time last year when Washington took him there was a real argument if they should have taken him ahead of Christian Gonzalez who the Patriots took mm -hmm. but he was he was on every NFL team's board as a first round pick like oh, it wasn't a shock that this was a first rounder yeah he's coming out of playing great football in the SEC at Mississippi State mm -hmm. his rookie year was a train wreck and it wasn't all his fault but plenty of it was I am fascinated to see how they can figure out to use Forbes to the best of his ability. 
I mean, I'm looking forward to that as well. But see, I see it differently. I think a lot of it was their fault, and, uh, and then in turn, he became him his fault. But you can't draft. Yeah, that's what a, I'm saying. You like, can't draft a guy and say go play without trying to teach him something. And the thing I saw, Ron and I saw Jack, they tried to get away from things when it didn't just work how they wanted it to work. You know, but if you are a true coach, you find a way to get the best out of him. Did they work on that with him? No. Every chance they got, they basically just did a Jeff in the bathroom yesterday on him. <laughs> you know, they, they did it over and over again. But ultimately, we I've been impressed by watching this coaching staff. Because I talk about accountability all the time. There was no accountability. And the easy way of doing this thing is say, oh, if Jaden does great. If Jaden is great and the offensive line sucks, the team going to suck. If Jaden is great and the offensive line not good and the defense give up 25, they won't be good. So just saying if the quarterback is great is not the way anymore. They got to get something out of the defense. What does the defense do? If they give them more opportunities with the football, they give them shorter fields. Your, your offense now can run through a game plan instead of, okay, we're going to go out, we got plans to run the ball, or we down by 14 in the first quarter. We're not running the ball anymore. And I think that is the thing. This defense improving will help the offense a lot better than people think. And that's going to come down not only, see, we, we, we talk about the secondary being better. Get some pressure on the quarterback and make the quarterback throw the ball when they don't have to. You're going to need more pressure off the edges. You're going to need more pressures up, uh, pressure up the middle. What do we say about quarterbacks? They don't like to step up to pressure. Well, get some pressure up the middle then. We weren't getting it a lot last year. Yeah, I mean, there's um, a, a lot of different ways this shakes out. I think it's been relatively impressive that we've all talked expectations without mentioning wins and losses. I think there is a good understanding. I mean, I think... Dude, if they go 7-10, and 10, they've almost doubled their win total, you know? Yeah. And, and, that and you got to try to have that mindset. That would be success, you know? To but, me, by far the most important thing is clarity at the quarterback position. And you sure as hell hope that that means by January, everybody in the DMV knows Jaden Daniels is our guy for the future. Um, I, I think that would be arguably the best possible outcome for the football team this fall is to know definitively a question that has not been answered in the affirmative in Washington for roughly 30 years. Yo, we got our guy. I, 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 I hear that Jay, but Daniel Jones is not the guy and the giants are still trying to make it work. See people that work in those positions in this, in this league, they don't take the mindset of, Oh, after one year, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna let this go. You know, it happened in what you call them, Arizona, when Cliff was there because he wanted Kyler, and Rosen wasn't getting it done. That doesn't happen most times, right? If you draft a guy at the number two pick, he's gonna get three years, four years to show you what he can do. B, I, I, I'm not saying that. That will definitely happen. I'm just saying no, that's no, I'm just saying the we, best we, thing that could happen. But but if he takes a step forward, you have to start pushing that and adding people around him so those steps can continue. Why do people say when we see we got our quarterback, we start building around him? Because when you make it easier for him, he can be very successful. But if the quarterback has to carry the load all the time, it doesn't work. 